press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primus. In the previous video on the Kubernetes architecture, we saw some of the building blocks of the Kubernetes architecture, the pods. Let me try to brief on what we saw in the last video so that we can get started and understand what is service and deployment after this. So this is how a Kubernetes cluster looks like. It constitutes of the master and the nodes. The node basically constitutes of a kube proxy, docker runtime, kubelet and also the pod. And inside a pod, there will be an IP address assigned to a pod. There will be a volume mounted onto that particular pod and also there will be docker runtimes. So these could be one docker containers or multiple docker containers. Same way within a node, there could be multiple pods. So basically a single node can have two different IP addresses because IP addresses are specific to a pod. And if something gets destroyed, if a pod gets destroyed, it doesn't get automatically recreated. The controllers inside the Kubernetes master creates the pod again. And the controller knows how it needs to manage the pods and the configuration information about the pods. Now moving a step ahead, how do we deploy our applications inside these pods? So there are two concepts called service and deployment when you consider a workload management. Workloads are nothing but running pods inside Kubernetes. So any deployment running inside a Kubernetes is called a workload. So for our naming convention, we will use it as deployment right now. But if you go to the general Kubernetes community, you would hear the term workload, which basically means a service or a deployment which we have deployed. Let's consider that these nodes are all pods. The blue boxes are all pods and they are obviously going to be having an IP address because these are pods. And we are going to deploy applications. So there is one application called app1 inside one particular pod and there is another application called app2. So whenever we deploy an application into a pod, that gets translated into something called deployment. So these are called deployments. We'll be deploying some containers inside these pods so that these can run as workloads and these are called deployment. So the green boxes are all called deployment and the orange boxes will be called services. Now, if you consider these pods, these are completely mortal. So if there is a failure in one of the pod, so for example, so let's say app2 goes down in our case. So the control manager knows that app2 went down and it will respawn new instance. However, there is no guarantee that it will be started in the same pod. So there could be a new pod. So if you notice here, we have different IP address now. So the IP address keeps on changing, right? So when we try to access a deployment or basically a rest endpoint, let's say, right? If a rest endpoint is exposed inside app one and app two, and if we need to access it, and if the IP address keeps on changing, we cannot use an IP address, right? So in order to do that, we need a domain name server, basically a domain name mapping. In Kubernetes, if you need to access a pod or a deployment, you need to deploy something called a service. A service is basically a REST object. In Kubernetes world, everything is an object. So the deployments are all objects. The service is also an object. So service and deployment both are objects. In order to connect to a deployment, you need to connect to a service and the service has a DNS on it. So we will have to provide it a name and it will be having a routing information to a particular pod. So how does it identify? It uses something called label selectors. Label selectors are basically tags using which we can group a particular deployment and a service. So in our case, app1 is a label selector. Notice that both the service and the deployment has app1. Even if the app1 pod gets killed and rebuilt, service will be able to connect to that particular pod because it's all linked by the label selectors and it doesn't have to undergo the IP address checks. In addition to provide a layer or an abstraction over deployment, REST also helps in load balancing the pods. So if let's say there are three instances of a pod running for a same application, the service abstracts and provides a load balancing between these three pods. So service can do load balancing, it can do domain name service routing and also it has port mappings as well. So essentially every deployment or an application would require a service so that we can connect to different deployments via the service. If we need to connect to the app2 deployment, we need to deploy a new service for the app2. And see here the label selectors will help you in detecting that this particular service corresponds to this particular deployment. And that's how service figures out which pod it needs to connect to.
So in addition to this, the control manager has a feature called replica sets. So if you want to scale a pod into four instances, you can provide a replica set of number four and automatically the controller will create four instances of the same pod. And all those four will have the same the label selectors so that the service can do load balancing on them. So these are all controlled at the control manager level. The service will do only the load balancing. Also, when you need a storage service or a storage volume, these will be mounted onto the pod directly. So these are the different components of a Kubernetes architecture. So let me summarize what all we saw. So Kubernetes has something called API server using which all the commands are triggered. So any CLI command you trigger from a command line interface goes to the API server and Kubernetes understands and interacts with different components via the API server. Controller manager takes care of creating and destroying prods. So it holds the information about what pod needs to be created. Control manager also provides feature for auto scaling by using replica sets. A pod is a basic block inside Kubernetes which runs container runtimes. It has information on how a container should be created and run. Pods are abstracted using a layer called service and the workloads inside pods are all called deployments. Service creates an abstraction layer over deployments or pods. So in order to access different deployments, services will create load balancing across different replica sets. Using the service, we can either do load balancing or domain name routing or port redirection. Using persistent volumes, we can mount these when we create and destroy pods. So these are the basic things which we need to understand in order to create an application inside a Kubernetes cluster. In the next video, we will look at how to deploy an application into a Kubernetes cluster which is hosted inside a Google Cloud platform. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.